Today we're going to be working on some DIY Halloween home decor crafts. We'll be focusing on using product from ReneeBouquets.com. So let's take a look at that product right now that we'll be using. First up, this is beautiful board laser cut chipboard. These are called a beautiful bits. That means they're small sizes. It's called moon and stars. And you can see you get all sorts of different kinds of stars and things like that. These are called bundle of bats in the large size. They come in a set of eight. And this is one of the patterns here. We'll be using three patterns from the set. This is the other pattern. And then the last pattern I'll show you later on because I forgot to show you here. <laughs> This is called a set of four quilling flourishes. I'll be using the small size. These are mini mulberry flowers, roses and leaves. We'll be using the black and the purple colors. They come in a set of 24 each color. These are called cobweb corners. You get two cobwebs and four of the freaky looking cute little spiders. <laughs> and I'm using this medium size in that. And this is Gaudy Girl Glitter Glass in the color black. It's a chunky glitter glass. And these are no hole glass microbeads in the color black. So let's get started combination projects one and two. First up, I'm going to be using these wood witches boots. I'll have the information to that in my description box for you. And the first thing I did is I traced around the boots and then I came in about an eighth of an inch in and I redrew a new pattern perimeter to cut my papers out. I'll be using these papers for the bottom of the boots and then these papers for the socks. I'm using a cardstock and a paper for both of them. So first off, I've cut out my new perimeter pattern here and I'm just on to my cardstock first for the socks. I'm just drawing out the top of the socks, both sides. Perfect. And then I will cut that out on both pieces. We're going to go a little bit slower today since we're just kind of working on one, two projects in combination. I'm not going to fast forward it too much for you here. So once both of those are cut out, then I'm coming into that cute orange dot paper and I'm retracing this on there. And then I'll come in and redraw a new perimeter. So this is how I did the first one. The first one took a little time, so I didn't quite show you what I did. But basically coming in here just like this, about an eighth of an inch in. And that's what I'm going to cut out for both pieces. I'll again cut two and then I'm going to be able to layer it so you see a little bit of cardstock there and a little bit of pattern paper and then you also see a little bit of perimeter around that wood. Now for the second project, skipping ahead here, I'm using a spindle for this and I've already sanded it. I cut it down. You could use just a regular dowel rod if you want but I got this because I wanted it to be have a little bit of you know a fun decor to it and I skipped ahead on that because I'm what I'm doing now is I've just got some black chalk paint here I'm painting both boots as you can see and I'll be painting that handle it's going to be our broom handle as well in black and then these boots came with little buckles I paint those off camera so just showing a little bit of the painting here Nice and easy. We're just kind of going with blacks and purples and oranges today. You know, traditional kind of Halloween colors. I'm also bringing in this sign that I got from Dollar Tree. And I'll take all the stuff off the back here. And then I'll um, sand around the side a little bit so that some of that paper is removed around the perimeter, as you can see here. And then I'll just go ahead and paint that up in black as well, front and back, again, just around the perimeter. Because what we'll do is I'll cut some black cardstock to fit the back, cover that completely. And in the front, I will cut that a little bit shorter all the way around, just like I did on the boots. Now, also, I have a couple of these arrows from Dollar Tree. What I did on the one arrow is I just cut that right end off. And in the other arrow, I cut that right end off. And then you can see in the front there, I cut that little section off as well. And then this is just another arrow that came from a Dollar Tree sign. I just sanded it and it's ready to go. You can use anything you want for arrows. You don't even have to have arrows. You can just have plain, you know, uh, rectangular wood, um, whatever works for you. You could use foam board if you don't have wood. And I'm going ahead and I'm painting one of these arrows in the black. And then I'm going to bring in this Dixie Belle chalk paint in the color terracotta, my favorite kind of orange color paint. And I'll paint two of those arrows as well. And you have to paint the back fully because I'm not going to cover the back and paper but the front really just kind of need to paint around the sides a little bit because again that will just get covered up um, with the paper the same kind of scrapbook paper so here's my 
board, my round circle, you can see how the edge shows just a little bit. That's my cardstock paper I cut out off camera, and then the back will be completely covered. And then on my arrows, I've got that cut and ready. I found a really pretty black paper for that and bringing back in that orange dot so that all looks cohesive with the boots. Okay, and I cut those a little bit short all the way around. I'll be using Beacon Fabri-Tac glue today. First up, we're going to go back to the socks on the boots, and I'm taking the open end of my scissor blades, and I'm scraping along the edges of the scrapbook paper part, and I'm going to glue that to the orange cardstock. Okay, I have to kind of do that first, because what I'm going to do, since I'm double layering this, I want this to have that... Uh, kind of ripped texture around the edge and it's going to be harder to do once I go to sew around the edge because you can see my sewing machine there on the right hand side. Now I'm taking these two pieces and I'm sewing them together. You can skip this part if you're not a sewer. I just like to add this texture uh, on my papers. I have no problems sewing um, you know, that thickness of paper because cardstock and, and scrapbook paper is fairly thin. I have no problem sewing that together. Um, it's really easy. You can see here what it looks like. Just sew on the paper like you're sewing on regular fabric, okay? And now I'm taking the open end of my scissor blades and scraping along the edge of that cardstock. So here you can see what it looks like as a whole. And then I'm going to come around on all my other pieces and just sew around the edges using a lighter thread on the darker colors. So you'll be able to see that really well here. Here you can see what it looks like. It just adds that nice kind of little country uh, look. Now we're going to start gluing everything on. I've sewed all my pieces off camera. We're going to glue our little socks on. And then we're going to glue our little boots on. I actually started so that um, my bottom thread is white and my top thread is black. Uh, because usually your bobbin thread and your other thread match. But I didn't care to change it. So those boots are sewn around in black so you can see that really well. Now I'm taking some of this wire from Dollar Tree. It's that really thin wire. You get an automotive section. You can see I kind of twirled it around a paintbrush there. And I'm going to go ahead and glue one of these wires on the left boot right up at the top of the sock there and sandwich it in between that uh, paper and the wood piece. And I'm going to glue this one on the right boot at the toe area sandwiching it again between the paper and the wood. Now I'm bringing in these quilling flourishes from Rene Bouquets and I'm going to use this Distress Oxide ink in Spiced Marmalade. It's a nice orange and I'm just using a little finger inker here. It goes over the tip of my finger and um, just daubing that on my pieces. It looks a little bright at first. I'll do two layers but once you do the two layers and then I use my heat tool uh, to you know, set that ink, it warms up nicely. And the color, as you can see over to the right, warms up really nice to a nice rustic orange. Now I'm bringing in the same Distress Ink and Black Soot, and I'm doing the same thing. I'm bringing in my bats and inking those up. You could paint these for sure, but, you know, sometimes I just like to get out the old ink versus the paint. And then I'm bringing in this mesh tubing from Dollar Tree Halloween and these black um, pipe cleaners as well and some of this sparkly... Uh, stuff from Halloween and then this webbing stuff that you also get at Dollar Tree Halloween. And then this is Sisal. It's originally this color on the left-hand side, but I took a bunch and I spray painted it last year on the right-hand side, spray painted it black so that, you know, it would be a nice black Sisal. And then those little pumpkin picks were just some that I got at Joann's. Now I'm bringing in, this is just some black checked fabric. I've taken about an inch of that and I ripped a big long piece. So I'm going to bring in that netting stuff and I'm going to glue it onto each of the boots here right at the top between the sock and the shoe part. And then I'm going to bring in a couple of those little pumpkins here and I'm going to glue that on over that netting stuff. For the life of me, I can't think what it is. <laughs> but you all know what it is. <laughs> and then I'm bringing in some of that mesh tubing. I just tied it in a little knot in the center so that I can glue it on. And then I curled that uh, pipe cleaner around a paintbrush. So here, the netting on, and then here's the pipe cleaner showing you easy how easy it is. Curling it around the paintbrush, just like that. Bend it in half in the center, and then I can glue it on right up underneath that mesh tubing. And then I'm bringing in those quilling flourishes. Again, you can see how nicely that ink darkened up as I heat set it and dried it. Just giving it a nice whimsical touch around the boots and the socks. And here I'm bringing in that netting. 
I just tied a knot in the center so that I could glue it down easier. And then I'm just taking this Distress Oxide Vintage Photo Ink, and I'm just kind of distressing up that fabric. I tied it into a bow, and I want to just darken it a little bit more. And I'll go ahead and glue that down right over that whole ensemble. And then bringing in some of that black sisal. Again, I just used that tan sisal and spray painted it black. And then I'm bringing in a little bit more of that netting stuff. And I'm putting it around uh, the bow. And then bringing in the Renee Bouquet flowers. I'll glue on top of the bow. I wanted that netting stuff to show a little bit more. So I went ahead and glued it up above there on, you can see here, and down below the bow so it's kind of hanging down so you can see that a little bit more otherwise why did I use it right and then gluing two black flowers and one purple flower right on the top of our bow perfect then we'll come over here to the right side adding in those flourishes bringing in just a little bit of whimsy over here It's just all about layering. You all know how we did with all our fall stuff if you've been watching my videos it's all about the layering Bringing in that netting, gluing it right over the top of the tubing and the quilling flourishes, bringing in our little bow. I already inked it off camera. Adding in some more of that netting stuff, the top and the bottom of our bow so we can see it a little bit more. Kind of brings in the creepy factor, doesn't it? <laughs> some of our spray painted sisal in black. And then again, a couple of Rene Bouquet mini mulberry flowers, paper flowers two black and one purple. Perfect. Now I'm bringing in those moon and stars kit, beautiful bits, and I'm bringing in this matte gel. It's transparent. You can certainly use the Beacon Fabri-Tac glue, but sometimes when I do these, I like to bring in the gel because it is like a paste and I can just kind of paint brush it on. And then I'm going to pour those microbeads, the Renee Bouquet uh, glass microbeads, right over the top. And those things are teeny. You can see how teeny they are. Definitely you're going to want a drip pan underneath because once you, you know, sprinkle those on, those beads are going everywhere. I'm going to do two larger stars and two smaller stars from that uh, Moon and Stars kit. And then here are my buckles for the boots. Again, as I mentioned earlier, I painted those in black, so I'm going to paint on the paste. Again, the Fabri-Tac glue will work fine. You just need to make sure whatever glue you're using dries clear, okay? And then I'm going to bring in that Gaudy Girl Chunky Glitter Glass and pour that over the top. And then I just kind of tap off the excess. Perfect. Tap off the excess. That looks really cute. I love it. Love how it's turning out. Again, tap off the excess and it's ready to go. See, you can't see that glue. So here I am taking the bats that we, um, you know, painted up, inked up, and I am taking the silhouette bat on the top and then the full bat on the bottom, and then I'm sandwiching the wire between both of them. I'm doing it on both sides. The Renee Bouquet bundle of bat set, sandwiching it around that wire. And then I'm going to take some of that uh, 3D matte gel, paint it on, and then pour glitter glass over the top. Just so it kind of combines in with our glitter on our little buckles. Then we're going to go ahead and start gluing our buckles down. So what you do to one shoe, obviously you do to the other shoe. Just giving it a little bit of difference of where the bats are located. Perfect. And then here's what our stars look like with the micro beads on it. Really gives it some great texture. Again, I'll kind of glue one larger star and one smaller star on the socks of our little boots here. Boot ensemble. So cute. Love how these turned out. This is actually a set, this whole project. Um, I had a friend ask me if I could make a present for her sister who loved Halloween. So this is the whole set coming together that I was commissioned to make for her. So here I am with our little round sign. I'm gluing the one cardboard on top. And I'm going to be using this set of three little witch brooms from Dollar Tree. I actually use like four sets, I think. And you're going to take off the little ribbon and that little wire and kind of cut off the broom and kind of spread them out a little bit. This is going to be the bottom of our 
uh, go on the bottom of our handle to create our broom. And I'm just putting them together. You can squish them together right at the bottom. Gluing with the Fabri-Tac glue, of course, you can use hot glue, will work fine. And you'll see some are a little taller, some are a little shorter. That is okay. We're going to cover that up. You just want to make sure at the bottom of your handle, the bottom of your brooms there, that you kind of trim those all off to make it even. So now, once those are all glued on and set up, I'm taking some larger twine that I get from Walmart, and I'm just wrapping it several times around the top at our um, broom part. Gluing a little there because I want to kind of double wrap. Again, we'll still cover that part at the top there. And I'm just tying a little knot and then I'm going to just cut it short and leave it like that. Now our bottom part here, I want to take this part and nail it to our base. Okay, I'm going to do that off camera, but I'll show you here in a second just what it looks like. I took three little nails here, you can see, and I nailed it to the base. And then once that's done, then we can cover the bottom with our cardstock. All right, so once that's all done, then I'm going to go ahead and just kind of flare out the little bristles of the broom and stuff. And then we're going to come in and cover our top part here with all that netting and stuff that we used on the boots. And then I've got some kind of hanging down the bristles here just so it kind of looks kind of cool. And I'm going to bring in another curly wire here. Don't you love my hands? No laughing. I want to bring in one more here on the handle so that kind of coincides and matches with our boots. And I'm going to come around the back side again using more of that netting, kind of cover all that top part up. And then I've coming to the handle here, I've pre-drilled three little pilot holes and pre-drilled three holes in each of our arrows adding a little glue here and I'm going to take a needle here grab one poke it through the hole of that so I can poke it into the hole of the handle so I know exactly where my screw needs to go and then I'll go ahead and screw those down in and I chose really flat head screws here so that when we cover it with paper you don't see those screws so I'm doing the same thing on all three arrows whatever direction I want them to face little glue first Grabbing my needle so I can see where to go right into the hole in the handle and then drilling in that screw. Once our arrows are on to our signpost here, I've created in my Cricut Design Space program three cute street names for our little arrows. I will have a free uh, printable for you. The link will be in my description box to my blog. So, you know, if you don't have access to Design Space or any other electronic cutting machine that you use, you can simply print these out from your computer onto your scrapbook paper that you like um, and then cut those out papers out to fit your little signs or you could use them and trace them onto your signposts and paint them on you know however you want to do that so I've chosen Booville Sleepy Hollow and Broom Parking for the names of our little signs here so we get all of these into place it's looking super super cute our colors are matching nicely with our boots. And now I'm bringing in, you can see the bottom bats. These bats are uh, the other designed bats I was telling you about earlier from our bundle of bat sets. And then I'm bringing in the cobwebs. I've already inked them with that black soot off camera. And now what I'm doing is I'm laying them where I want on the arrow. And then I'm taping behind the uh, arrow the part that's going to hang off on both of those cobwebs. And then I'm gonna spray them off camera with some spray adhesive and I've done that now. And then I'm just going to press them onto the arrow and then I'll pull the tape off. That way the part that's hanging off won't be all sticky. So I hope that was understandable. That looks perfect. And now I'm taking those last two little bats and adding in my Beacon Fabri-Tac glue, of course, and I'm just sandwiching them around that curly wire we put on that broom earlier. And then I'm going to come in with that 3D matte gel. I'm going to paint it on the cobwebs and then sprinkle over that chunky glitter glass. Turn it over, of course, tap off the excess. Do the bottom one, the same thing. That way it, that glitter glass and stuff will be tied into the glitter glass we used on the witch's boots. And then I'll come onto the back, just the front of it. I didn't worry about doing the back. The back's all nice and finished off with that ink, so it looks perfectly wonderful. And then once that is complete, get that glitter glass on there. I'm going to add a little more Fabri-Tac glue and bring in that black sisal just above that netting to give it a little bit of a creepy cute look. And then that makes this project complete. 
So I really hope you like both of these projects today. Leave me a comment down below and let me know your thoughts on how these projects turned out. Please give this video a thumbs up. And if you're not a subscriber and you walked in here and you're just checking things out and you're digging what you saw here today, make sure before you click off, you hit that red subscribe button and notification bell so you don't miss out on another video from me. Now, I will have all the information in my description box that I mentioned throughout the video, the free printable, the boots, all the Renee Bouquet product, all those links and everything will be down there for you. Before I go, I'm going to leave you with one final thought. In the Bible, book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 10, verse 13, it states, And God is faithful. He will not let you be tested beyond what you can bear. But when you are tested, he will also provide a way out so that you can endure it. This lets you know that Jesus doesn't give you anything in life that he thinks you can't handle. But you can miss the opportunity that helps the situation if you don't pay attention to the way out that he provides, or if you simply reject the escape plan because you don't like the way it has to be done. Maybe you're even questioning the way out because you aren't sure if you're hearing his voice correctly. So this leads to the fact that you have to know God well enough to be able to recognize his voice when he extends his decisions for you. So let's take a side thought for a moment. How do you recognize God's voice? Number one, you get in the Word. You find the time to read the Bible every day, or you get the Word on audio so you can listen to it during your busy schedule. The enemy has the ability to try and use God's words against you, twisting it just enough so that you think it's right. He tried it with Jesus in the desert. How did Jesus respond? He used the truth of the Word right back at the enemy's twisted version. Number two, spend time with God worshiping, praying, listening. It's all about communion with God so that you can begin to identify and know that when he is speaking to you, this also builds your faith, giving it a solid foundation that you will build upon day after day. You'll know the word, you'll know God, and you'll recognize his voice as he speaks to your heart. With that said, let's go back to the beginning. In a tough situation that you may be facing, God will provide a way out so that you can endure it. You don't have to understand the path that God has given you. You just have to have faith to walk in it. You have to put your foot in the water. God knows exactly what lies ahead. He knows the best route you need to take and how to arrange all the pieces to work together in order to get you through. So trust in that. Jesus will sort it out for you. He will provide the way out so that you can endure it. He said it in the Bible and his word does not go void. I thank you for sharing your time with me, and I'll talk with you again soon. Bye.